beast. Just how is this going to happen? And what is the mark of the beast? Perhaps that's the better question. Well, we first need to look at Daniel 2, 43 and 44, where Daniel says, as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Well, we can put this into modern terms. This is my translation. They will hybridize, that is mingle, mix, or crossbreed themselves with the genetic material, that is the seed, of humankind. And just a, a word about the, the Aramaic at this point. This part of uh, Daniel is written in Aramaic. This is what we call a reflexive verb. And a reflexive verb is where the subject is doing the action, but also receiving the action. For example, I bathe myself. There I'm doing it, but I'm also receiving it. And so here, whoever they are, they're going to mingle themselves. They're going to take their own genetic material and they're going to mingle it with humanity. And that tells us that they are somehow distinct from humanity. Some people have suggested that this is simply uh, talking about one human group mixing with another human group. Well, that happens every day. That's not much of a miracle. That's not really something that's special to be talking about. But who are they? That is the big question. Well, normally when we come to an, uh, a pronoun such as they, we look for an antecedent. We look for the word that came before it, that defines it. For example, if I say I was talking to John yesterday and he told me, etc., etc., you would know that the, the antecedent of he is in fact John. But in this case, the antecedent comes after because there's nothing that comes before it. And they are defined as the kings. And so these kings are not human. They're, they're different. They have to be different because they're going to mingle themselves with the seed of men. But if they're not human, then what are they? And the answer actually comes to us in Revelation 17:12 where the angel is explaining to John, he says, the 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings. Now keep this in mind that the 10 toes, the 10 horns, and the 10 kings are all one and the same. He says, the 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. Well, what can we learn from this passage? Well, first of all, we see that they were kings in John's day. And yet they were waiting for their authority to be given to them in the days of Antichrist. That means that they are at least 2,000 years old. Now we know that the oldest man that ever lived was Methuselah. He lived to be 969 years old. Obviously, these kings are older than Methuselah. Therefore, they cannot be human. They must be fallen angels and or demons. So... And we see also this in Daniel chapter 10 where the angel comes to Daniel. He talks about how he was withstood by the prince of Persia and also by the kings of Persia. And he remained there 21 days until Michael, the chief prince, came in and got him out of trouble. So those kings that we're seeing there are in fact fallen angels. Those are the principalities and the powers that we hear about in Ephesians chapter 6. There is a demonic deception that is coming. This is all part of it. And Daniel 2.43 shows us that there is going to be a mingling of seed. But first we want to see how there are very many Bible scholars and otherwise that's, that believe that there is a demonic deception that is coming. For example, Walter Martin believed that demons have been masquerading as extraterrestrials. Dave Hunt said the following, UFOs are clearly not physical and seem to be demonic manifestations from another dimension calculated to alter man's way of thinking. And then John Ankerberg and John Weldon said the fact that all UFO phenomena are consistent with a demonic theory indicate that this explanation is the best possible answer for the solution to the UFO mystery. And alongside of that, we have... Hollywood giving us a lot of propaganda. In 2009, there was the movie Knowing, where the Earth is going to get blasted with a solar flare, but it's the aliens who come to the rescue. The aliens have these type of Noah's Arks, if you will, where they have two of every kind of animal and two, uh, you know, a boy and a girl, and then they take them at the end, after the, the Earth gets destroyed, they take these children and the animals and these Arks to these different planets. 
we see that throughout the movie that there are references to God and references to Jesus. But in the end, where are they? 